Um, hi, welcome back to the C Files. Um, and before we start anything, oh my god, it is a hot day. It is. <laughs> it's a very Good random. It's a, and it's I'm, a... I'm in the uh, loft. I'm in like my attic because my clean is hoovering downstairs, and I don't want it to be noisy. And it is like ten trillion degrees here, so I'm slowly frying. Yeah, I know. In nondescript London, you don't know, need to know where we live. Um, it is. It's really hot. I don't know why it is, but honestly, speaking of hot, we what we this episode, this episode, we're uh, reviewing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and the weather matched the movie. Wow, Jesus Christ, it's hot today. <laughs> okay, we're sorry. We'll try not to talk about the weather the entire podcast. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, you wanted to review this movie. Yes, yeah, I wanted to. I, I'm Max. If you Max, know. Max again. Yeah, we. If I'm you, Luke. If you don't recognize my voice from the like fifteenth billionth time. <laughs> yeah, I've dragged him on four times, so if you should know his name by now, guys. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, Ma- yeah, Max and Luke. Um. Um. It's so you suggested this, and then I realized it's a really good time to review this movie because it's uh it's the summer, uh. So, I and I wanted to rewatch, and the book adaptation is just come out as well. So, oh yeah, you told me that. I know it's. A, I'm reading it very slowly. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry if we're like we seem kind of out of it. We'll try and be in it, but again, really, really hot day. Also, we live in London where we never get hot days, so we're not used to this at all. Um, yeah. So, what did so is this your first Quentin Tarantino movie? This is my second. Second. What was your first one? Inglorious Bastards, which so you, I loved. And I preferred, you, actually. You prefer Inglorious Bastards to this? Yes. All right. So this is your se- so you see so this is your second uh, Tarantino movie. Yes. What did you think? I didn't really uh, I understood the kind of story behind Leonardo DiCaprio's character him trying to kind of get back into his career that was kind of fading away. But yeah. whatever, what was Brad Pitt's character called? Cliff Booth. Cliff Cliff Booth. Cliff Booth. I did not understand what was the, I didn't understand what was going on with him the whole movie. What did you not what did you not get about him? I don't know, like what was I don't I didn't like what was the what was I understood the story with Leonardo DiCaprio, but I didn't understand what really the story was with him. There is no story, he's just chilling. <laughs> That's also one thing I kind of did like about this movie. There wasn't really a story. Oh, no, this is... It kind of was just once upon a time in Hollywood. One yeah. day, one well, week, this is what happened. Okay, I'm just going to say this. If you haven't watched the movie, I want you to do two things. I want you to, firstly, look up who Sharon Tate is, read the Wikipedia page, and then I want you to pause this and watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, because this is a movie that, if you know who Sharon Tate is, makes a lot more sense. Really? I'm going to make a guess. You do not know who Sharon Tate is. I do not know who Sharon Tate is. So, okay, spoiler warning. Sharon Tate is Margot Robbie. Yeah. And in real life, she was murdered um, by, a, by a group of very un likely people known as the Manson family mm. who die at the end of this movie. Um, mm. This is a bit like Inglorious Bastards with a uh, Tarantino. This is so, but the reason that that's like, I think the biggest flaw of this movie, if you don't know who Sharon Tate is, the ending kind of seems out of nowhere. Like, Wait, so, okay. So, the ending. Oh. Yeah. So what? So in real life, what happened is the Manson family went up and killed Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski. Not Roman Polanski. The guy she was he was with, right? Yeah. Um, while she was pregnant. In the movie, they go up there. Rick Dalton yells at them. They go to try and kill Rick Dalton and get beat the fuck up by Cliff. <laughs> Cliff, Cliff <laughs> Booth, yeah, and like so, a lot of like, all of like Sharon Tate is not in this movie as much as you would think she is, because you know 
she's on the poster in Mass and with her, but like compared to like um compared to uh, Brad Pitt and like Leonardo DiCaprio, she's not really in the movie. Like I uh, I watched this in like bits because it's a really long movie, and I kind of paused. I paused just before he went to Italy, and then when we see her again near the end, I, I had entirely forgotten she was in the movie. Really? Yeah. Just, yeah, this movie, I, I feel like, could be split into two bits. The pre-Italy and post-Italy. Yeah. I don't really understand what was going on with her character, either. Was she just doing... Chilling, yeah. Doing, doing her... Well, the well, the the, the, only, the the big the biggest scene of hers is um when she goes to the cinema and watches herself in the movies, right? Yeah. Right. That's kind of Tarantino, like um. In like dedication to her, because again, she was brutally murdered after being like when well, when she was six months pregnant, she was murdered by a bunch of like terrible, terrible people. Hmm. So it's kind of her. Were you know, they like gypsies, like they were in the? Or not they're hippies. Hippies. Sorry, hippies. They're not gypsies, they're hippies. Hippies. Sorry, I get the two, two sound similar. Yeah. Um, and the, and they're real, the Manson family are real people. Um, they're all dead. I mean, they're probably all dead. Yeah. But yeah, so, so that's... So, um, yeah, that's kind of what the part of the movie... But again, it's like, if you don't know... I feel like if you don't know that, as you didn't, and I didn't know on the first uh, viewing of this movie, it makes a lot less sense, you know? Hmm. Like um, I found that uh, watching this a second time, um, I I understood, um, I I understood more. Like, oh, that's I I can see why he did that. Or whatever he did that, you know. Hmm. Yeah, we're probably gonna kind of just go all around this movie. I feel like there's a lot to talk about here. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, I found the end scene hilarious. That's wait the vi- the violent bit. Yes. Okay. Really happy we're doing this virtually. Don't, and we're not in the same room together. Uh. <laughs> I... Anyway. So, I just found it hilarious how Cliff Booth was high and all this havoc was going around him and he was just standing there like, what the hell's going on? And his dog was going ballistic. Just yeah, that is a. I, I okay, yeah, I get what you mean. I thought we were like 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 he's when he's smashing her head into like oh, a god, wall. Oh god, that bit was like, terrifying. <laughs> I'm like ah, okay, yeah, no, that is that. I admittedly that was kind of funny. Him, like, because there's a line when uh Charlie, I think Charlie Manson walks in. He's like, I am the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's work. And Cliff Booth is like, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's a that's a. It's really abrupt too. I was like, I was really surprised by that movie because this was the first Tarantino movie I'd ever seen, and I'd heard he's violent. But like, oh yeah, I watched this a while ago. I'd heard he'd violent, but I wasn't. And I was, but I was like, this is his newest movie. I'll just see whatever the fuss, what the fuss is. Um, and it wasn't violent. And then the ending happened. Like it's not like a one guy. Get, like there's a bit of violence when he goes to one ranch, but. Except for, except for that, um, like it's entirely, it's very not violent at all, you know. Hmm. There's no violence, and then there's the ending, and it's like the goriest, th- one of the goriest Tarantino things I've ever seen, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Like that, I think it's the movie's eight, age rated eighteen, and I'm that in that is that. why that last yeah. scene is why it's like eighteen. Pardon was it? No, 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 no! I was just saying what you were saying for that reason. That's why it's an eighteen. Oh yeah, that's um, and again, that's one of those things. Where, like, if you watch the first time, like, Jesus, you're like you're watching. He's like, Jesus Christ, they're murderers, but have some dignity. But then you're like, oh, they they killed that. They're, they're the people who killed Sharon Tate. Okay, that I, I and I, I like, and like, so I get why Tarantino like felt it was uh, the right thing to do because he uh, he grew because uh, this i this is i think he's got to be his most personal movie because um well he, he this the whole uh, like, the whole advertising kind of advertising thing is he grew up he was like five six years old when this is set mm. so he went like really when making this movie apparently really wanted to like rebuild everything from his childhood mm. like he closed down hollywood boulevard redid everything and then filmed like 
Cliff Booth driving down it, you know? Like, that's actual Ho- Hollywood Boulevard that okay. he was able to shut down, you know? Hmm, yeah. Yeah, so that's, like... I mean, the, the level of, like, um, just work that goes, like, go- went into this movie is, inc- like, incredible, like, mad, mad, like, mad men levels of, um, just, like, de- detail in, like, all the stuff. Um, it's really, like, his kind of biggest love letter to cinema, I think. Like, his biggest... Hmm. Why he loves movies, you know, because hmm. all his mother movies, like, um, do mention films and like just uh, fit like stuff like that a lot, but they're not, they never go as deep as this. Hmm. Um, yeah, the again, I'm kind of just walk, walk going around this, um, in general. What did you think? Did you have any opinions on the Bruce Lee scene? Because a lot of other people did. Oh, was that meant to be Bruce Lee? That is Bruce. That's Bruce Lee, yeah. Did you not get that? No. I, well, it was like 10 at night for me, so my brain... Oh, you watched it like late. Okay, yeah, fair. Um, um... <laughs> yeah, no, that's, so that's Bruce Lee. And this oh. movie... That was, like, a, you know, obviously a guy playing Bruce Lee. And this movie got in trouble because of that. Why? Okay, so... Ever, so Tarantino's like this big Bruce Lee fan. Um, you, know, you know Kill Bill? Yeah. That's, you know, that yellow, like, jumpsuit she wears? Yeah. That's based off a Bruce Lee suit in one of his movies. Like, he loves Bruce Lee. Mm. And then he makes this movie that portrays Bruce Lee as an asshole. Which mm. apparently he was. I can't say. Um, and then everyone got, like, he got, like, some bad, like, people got annoyed about it. And he said he was kind of surprised. Like, he gets that if Bruce Lee's daughter was annoyed with him. Because he's like, I don't get what everyone else. Because yeah. apparently Bruce Lee was admittedly an, 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 like a very arrogant guy. You really? Know? Oh, apparently. Oh, the pro- the problem was, apparently, oh, the two things that people were pissed off about. Firstly, they portray Bruce Lee as annoying. Yeah. How old is Cliff Booth supposed to be in that? Fifty some, fifty, forty something. Ah. Oh. oh, okay. He's he's Brad Pitt's age. Hmm. That's what I thought. Yeah. No, he's not. He's not. So, and the book kind of helps co- goes in context. Um. Apparent, firstly, so apparently Bruce, and again, I'm just talking about, like, what Tarantino himself has said, Bruce Lee was not a very good fighter. Really bad at taking a hit. Like, he couldn't really take a hit very well. Really? In a fight sense, he was very weak. It's it's often said that, you know, um... What's that famous boxer, dude? Crap. Uh, something... Muhammad Ali... If him and Muhammad Ali... If Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali go into a fight... Like, Muhammad Ali would wipe the floor with him. Cause really? It was just, it's just a map. Like, Bruce Lee was strong in, like, he could fight, but like, he's not, he, well, he'd never gone into, like, a proper fight. Mm. And as the book explains, Cliff Booth is a war hero from Korea. And so, did he actually kill his wife? I think so, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I mean, the, the movie doesn't, like, yeah, so Cliff, the movie, like, says in an offline, like, the guy killed his wife. I think Keyleth Booth did kill his wife. You know, like, there's nothing to, because I know there's nothing to say he did do it, but there's nothing to say he didn't do it. Yeah. So I'm going to say he probably did it. In this what and I think it's kind of Quentin Tarantino messing with, messing with the audience, being like, he killed his wife, which would usually make you not root for a character, right? Yeah. But then he's like, but then he kind of, but then he's casting Brad Pitt as the character who you're like, just from watching movies, toned to like Brad Pitt because you know he's is Brad. He in, is he in every single one of Tarantino's movies? Uh no, I don't think, I don't think anyone's in every. The only person Brad Pitt's only, yeah, no, I think I understand what you think is he's only in Inglorious Bastards and Once Upon a oh, okay. Hollywood. Those are his is only it, two movies. Is it, so then is it um. Is it Quentin Tarantino or Wes Anderson who always reuse the same cast? Tarantino reuses a lot of his cast. I mean, neither. Yeah, like Wes Anderson also like, uses a lot of his cast a lot. Um, he always has like Bill Murray, um, Owen, Owen, and Luke Wilson. You can usually bet are gonna be in the movie. Hmm. I mean, there's other people as well. I can't remember their names. Hmm. Um, but yeah, like there, are, he, yeah, Wes Anderson did. But Tarantino, he often has, I mean, Samuel L. Jack, he's, like, iconic for always like, Samuel L. Jackson in his movies, you know? Hmm. Um, Kurt Russell has been in the last 
three. His Kurt Russell's been in three. Uh, was Brad Kurt Pitt's. Russell in, Kurt Russell was in Hollywood, wasn't he? Yeah, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell played just two things. Kurt Russell was the narrator. Ah. Oh. That was him narrating. Random, very, very random parts of this movie, hmm. and um, Kurt Russell played. You know the guy who, when like Bruce Lee gets into a fight, he kicks Cliff Booth off the. Yeah, set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's also his, Kurt Russell. His yeah. wife hates. Yeah. I- ironically, the, his wife is played by a stunt woman. Who always <laughs> that stunt woman is like the, that stunt woman. I think has worked on. I think started on Kill Bill Volume One and has like been in every movie since. Oh wow! Yeah, she's she's got to be like. His second, other than Samuel Jackson, most like person who shows up the most because she's in mm-hmm. seven. Just Jesus Christ, seven. That's a lot. Seven. I'm trying to go, to go through the men in my head. Seven, two. Uh, <laughs> run through them in my head. Like, yeah, I think she's in seven. Um, yeah. So yeah, she's so she's in them a lot. Uh, Kurt Russell's in three movies. DiCaprio's in two. Mm. Um. I mean, yeah, she, he kind of has, like, his gallery of actors and actresses he'll kind of pick and choose from. Hmm. I am shocked he's never done a movie with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Matthew McConaughey, I'm like, I'm like, because Tarantino says he's only going to do one more film. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because what he's done, right, is he's, he said, um, I mean, he's technically, he said he's always gonna, he's only going to do ten movies. Technically, he has already done ten movies, but he considers... Kill Bill Volume One and Two to just be one movie. Mm. Yeah. So he's only going to do one more movie left, and I really, really want. If I could just choose something, cast some casting choice to happen, I want Matthew McConaughey to be do something in a Tarantino movie. I'm shocked that hasn't happened yet. Mm. You know, because he'd be such a good fit. He's a <laughs> like, great actor. Yeah, he's and also I don't know. Has Matthew McConaughey ever played a cowboy? I don't think so. I can't really picture him being a cowboy either. I can perfectly. He's like the most Texan actor. Um, oh. what was I say? I really like the ending, like the end credits bit with like the advert for red apple cigarettes. That's yeah. That's another running gag in Tarantino's movies. Uh, red apple cigarettes. I was waiting for one for it to show up. Yeah, you Tarantino. know the, the the red that red apples and like in all his movies. Yeah, 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 most of his movies, you know. Yeah, I think they're all movies. I can't. I, oh, I, I'm always kind of like, did were they in that? Did they? Yeah, it's you know one of those things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, saying Matthew McConaughey being a cowboy. Yes, I was saying that. Yeah, I'm surprised. There's a lot of actors who've like he who like I, and I'm surprised he's never even like been. It doesn't seem like he's been approached to play anyone, Sorry? which is. I don't think he's even been like approached to play at anyone, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like the um. Sorry, I just I'm keep having yeah. like memories from this movie. I like the bit where they did like the Great Escape bit with. Yeah, no, that's a yeah, yeah. The with the the Caprio instead of McQueen. Yeah. That's um. Yeah, that's a really good. That's a that's a really. I've, I found out how to do that. It's apparently like relatively easy. You you just need a green screen and some like be good at lighting. Like it's a it looks re- it looks really good. Like if you told if I hadn't seen the Great Escape and I didn't like you know know who DiCaprio was and someone was said yeah this is DiCaprio was in uh, the Great Escape I'd be like I'd believe you you know. Hmm. And with that whole conversation. Is kind of because he's talking with Timothy Oliphant hmm. on the set of um, yeah. So he's he's up. So in this scene, like in that scene, um, he's having a conversation with Timothy Oliphant on the set of this cowboy of the pilot of this cowboy show, which I've I in the second on the rewatch I paid attention to the script. This is the best cowboy show I've ever seen. Like, yeah, yeah. 50s cowboy shows were not this good. Um, oh, is that the they, one with the with the? Is that the one where he keeps messing off his lines, or is that the one with the? Yeah, girl? that's the same show. Oh, that's just later in the episode. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, it's um, it's really 
So like he, that the, the irony in that is that he's having a conversation. He he's with Timothy Oliphant, who ha- actually is on a Kyle Boy TV show. Mm. I think like just it's called like Justified or something. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the irony there. But basically, the reason um, what was that? Uh, the reason that he has that whole story about being on the Great Escape is that he, he's he, you know how he says it like oh because he says it like oh I wasn't I was never like had an audition i was just that yeah, they yeah, yeah. when actually he was he is he like filmed for it at least as the movie suggests hmm. um it's because like he the, the, i think what the whole thing's about him like being a failed actor like he not a failed actor but like he's past his prime hmm. like the movie set in 1969 which apparently which was like this big kind of turning age for uh like um, american cinema where like it kind of, it stopped being in like that that fifties and forties style like guys who who were like with the gelled back hair and the suits like the Dean Martin Frank Sinatra type guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Star has becoming more of a seventies you know like grungy rock and roll like kind of lead, hmm. which Rick Dalton just isn't, you know, like he's kind of, he is like from that generation of like all the cowboy actors you know, hmm. um. So that the whole thing is like, yeah, he's kind of just disappointed in how like he's no longer this. Is, he kind of missed out on his chance, hmm. um, and that's why he goes to Italy because in Italy, in the sixties and seventies, Italy still had that kind of cowboy. There's cowboy movies, and I think the two, like my my favorite western, came out of Italy. Um, Once upon a time in the West is not is actually is filmed in the U.S. but is is an Italian movie. It's like it's filmed. It's filmed in the US and um, it's in English, but it's yes, yeah, it's entirely filmed by by in the by it's by Italians because um, Italy just had this massive market in the sixties for like for like westerns, and I don't I don't know why, but they uh they just seem to be uh, something there. So that's that's kind of what the movie's about. Because at the beginning, it's Al Pacino coming over, it's like yeah. you come to make movies in Rome. Uh, Yes, and uh, so that's kind of well, at least what he's like at some level thinking about, you know. Hmm. But like, it's kind of like he's are all uh, are all most of the characters in this movie based oh real based off real people or are real people who actually existed. Um, I I try I try because I don't because uh, obviously Rick Booth and um. Rick, sorry, Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth aren't real people. Um, Are they not based off real people? That Cliff Booth is kind of well. They're both like they're both based like loosely on real people or like the the type of person that wo- person was. Mm. Um, like um, I think like uh, par- apparently Tarantino based uh Rick. Rick, uh, Rick Dalton off like a lot of of those, you know, like a lot of cowboy TV actors, uh, a- actors like um, yeah, I, I can't remember any any names right now, but you know, yeah, that yeah, kind of type of guy. I know what you mean, yeah. And the and this is a thing I didn't actually find out until after the movie. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of jump over this thing. So the 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 best scene in the movie, by my in my opinion, is um, the the scene at Spawn Ranch. When uh, Cliff Booth goes over there, you know. I was so confused. I, yes. I was like, I for some reason felt like it was. There was something very suspicious about it all, and I didn't. I couldn't so, put my finger on so, it. So, so it kind of the, the scene kind of worked. Uh, <laughs> um. So, basically, what's happening is Cliff Booth picks up a member of the Madsen family. He doesn't know she's part of the Madsen family because they haven't done anything yet. Yeah. At least, like, nothing to get them in. Like, are they, they haven't... They are... The... Mm... It's kind of like one of those grey lines where I would say they're probably a cult, but they're not technically a cult. Mm. Uh, they're not They're not in a cult in that they're religion. They're just, you know... But no, actually, the majority of cults aren't re- religious. Oh, they aren't? Yeah. Okay, then they're a cult. I was watching a video on cults. Wow. Yeah. 
kind of creepy, but yeah. Um, yeah. So the so the um, yeah. So it seems kind of like uh. So basically, so he Cliff Booth has. I'm just gonna kind of recap the scene. He picks up uh, a lady called, and I really want to get this name right so I don't sound so because um, where is it? All right, I can't remember her name. Anyway, um, so here we go. Her name is Pussycat. Um, so he picks up a hippie girl called Pussycat, and then she drives, tells him that she lives on Spawn Ranch, where he used to work when he made films with Rick Dalton, right? Hmm. So he drives her there, and then he asks uh, about um, Bruce Dern, uh, who plays George Spann. I don't know if that's who owns the ranch, and he's like, did these hi-? he's trying to, he's, and he's thinking instead, did these hippies kill him, and then take steal his ranch from him? Because he's like, he's an old man, as like the movie shows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the whole scene, the whole scene is like a whole like him walking to the room, is kind of, kind of um, is based on, is he gonna like, is is it is Bruce Dern dead, and did they kill him, and he's is like is uh. Cliff Booth can have to fight his way out of this, because yeah, yeah, yeah. and I found afterwards, Spawn there was a true there was an actual stunt man who went to Spawn Ranch and then the Manson family killed him. Really? I don't think th- over these circumstances, but they did like kill him when he came over. Hmm. So and uh, again, like the Tarantino was like playing with the fact that um, the audience knows that Cliff Booth isn't a real person, hmm. so if Tarantino wants to, he can kill off this character. You know, hmm. um, but yeah, so so, but then like it's kind of like a, a cop out where, um, he then he's not dead, but like he's not and en- he's blind, so he's not entirely like up there, you know. Yeah. Like he, I think, Cliff Booth leaves kind of thinking that they haven't told uh Bruce Dern everything, like he, there are more people there than Bruce Dern thinks there are, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so there's, I mean, there's kind of that kind of element to it. But it's, it's a, I think it's, it's just a really well crafted scene, you know? Like, it's, it's well directed. It, it, it's, um, bleh. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's well, it's well, like, crafted. It's well done. Brad Pitt is all, like, I think it just like, has a really cool character kind of, dem- it's like, this is why people like Brad Pitt and why, like, I think Tarantino cast him, like, is because of this scene. Hmm. Where he's just kind of, he feels like a cow. Like, I think, and a lot of people talk about this is the juxtaposition and the kind of mirroring of Rick Dalton and Brad Pitt, right? Because yeah, 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 the movie start like this scene starts because Rick Dalton is filming a scene with like that little girl, where he's threatening a little girl, saying he's he's like he's gonna kill them, kill her if like her family doesn't give him money, right? Yeah. And then it cuts to Brad Pitt threatening a slightly older girl, saying, "Well, he's like, you'll let me in through this door." He's like, "I'm gonna get in here no matter what, and this door isn't gonna stop me, right?" Hmm. So it's kind of like the juxtaposition, and like while Leonardo DiCaprio is like playing an actor who's playing a cowboy, right? Brad Pitt is kind of acting like a cowboy. Like yeah, I don't think, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't think it's like trying to be subtle about it. Like he's he has like the the his like thumbs in the hoops of his belt and he's like kind of sauntering over in that kind of thing you see like cowboy like you see cowboys in like movies and stuff do um and he's like he has that very calm like like demeanor you see in like uh Amido, Aminio Morin sorry I can't remember his name I just look it up. he's a he's a director of like he did the good bad and the ugly a fist full oh. of I can't remember his name right now but um yeah so he's kind of got that cowboy swagger to him and it's kind of like and how like or how throughout the movie you see you hear about like rick dalton's like the movie star right hmm. um but but um brad pitt is the one driving around L- like a hot la in like a nice car you know hmm. and like he acts like he's a cowboy you know like when you know yeah. when he climbs onto the roof to fix the roof yeah yeah he like he put he wears a holster and like puts his beer in it you know yeah yeah like he's all like, and like he's just like all like how even though like the character's kind of in the limelight, even though Brad Pitt's kind of basically 
who basically is the personification, a modern day personification of the characters Rick Dalton plays. Like yeah, um, yeah. when when um when when the the killers like come in the like in the ending when the killers when the Manson family comes to uh, like kill the family, Brad Pitt is the one who like kills basically all of them, you know. Yeah. But then when that one girl falls out, uh, Rick Dalton's the one who gets like the money shot with the flamethrower, like he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's whilst like he's like he's the one with all the praise because he got the he got the flamethrower. But that even though and Rick, and Brad Pitt just has to go off to the hospital like ah, <laughs> and like the juxtaposition of how Cliff Booth is a cowboy and Rick Dal- the Rick Dalton is just playing a cowboy but you know gets all the praise you know yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. and that's kind of what um Tony is kind of playing with playing within the scene. Like there's even a character in the movie who like Al Pacino is kind is basically kind of a personification of Quentin Tarantino because when Quentin Tarantino started out, um, a lot of the actors he hired were actors who had been famous and weren't made, doing all this stuff anymore. Like, um, oh crap, I forgot his name. Let me just look it up. Um, uh, he, uh, John Travolta, obviously. Uh, Greece yeah. and all that. Greece was in the seventies. Pulp Fiction was in the nineties. John Travolta was not doing great. Like the he currently he was doing the uh, Look Who's Talking movies about talking babies, um, which I think are okay, but I understand like one like the um, like the, the the peak of his career, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. when uh, he and when he did Jackie Brown his um his third movie, the the lead in that the two of the two actors in that movie are uh, Pam Grier. Another like actress, really famous in the seventies, like she wasn't doing anything, and um, Robert Foster, who was like a big, you know, like one of those, um, one of those, like you know, another one of the like, fifties kind of cowboy actors who again like hadn't done anything in anything big in forty years, and then because what I think Tarantino and like what Tarantino is famous for is he gets actors and then he puts them in something he make he reinvents them into something. Which is kind of what Al Pacino's character wants to do for Rick Dalton, you know, like, hmm. you know, so because you know how Tar- so Tarantino he reinvented Bruce uh, Robert Forster from like this fifties guy to like a cr- like a car- an actor in crime movies in the early two thousands. Like Robert Forster, because of Jackie Brown, is in Breaking Bad, you know. Oh, I didn't know this. Yes, and then and like because of, and um, John Travolta was kind of known as like a rom com type of guy. But then, yeah. because of Pulp Fiction, he then got on a, like a lot of like crime comedy movies, you know. Hmm. So he he he, and then he so Tarantino he gets actors who haven't been working, and then he reinvents them and make and gives them work again. And that's kind of what Al Pacino wants to do with Rick Dalton. Like he he sees how Rick Dalton he's playing the heavy, which just means the villain, and like all these all the pilots of TV shows, and he's saying. If you come to Rome, oh, I'll reinvent like how Al Pacino, as I mentioned, like Al Pacino is basically Quentin Tarantino. You know, like he's he's hmm. the director. He's like the kind of quirky director who, even as, like, as the movie, I love all the violence and killing in those movies. <laughs> Which, if you have seen a Quentin Tarantino movie, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino likes squibs, to put it lightly. Um, uh, this is this is I'm trying to think. Uh, so this is one thing about um, come on, again just jumping around. This movie is a bit is similar to Jackie Brown and of like his entire filmography, in that it's kind of a hangout movie. You know, what it's kind of it's a that? very chip. It's a movie you can put in the background, or like if you or like you can put it on in the middle of the day, and like watch it and. Thing. There's no, you, if you can kind of like to pause it and go do something else and then press to turn it on again, you know, like it's just there a hangout really, movie. There isn't really much to miss. It's, like, yeah. it's not like a Marvel like, movie. Tarantino really. in this movie, he takes his time. Like a lot of these shots are entirely point. Like it's yeah, like and like Jackie. I mean, Jackie Brown definitely has more of a plot than this. Like the plot is a lot more driven. Like because. Throughout most of this movie, it's just his characters, you know, just chilling, you know, just being like, "Are you good? Yeah, cool." <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like no one's um and apparently and I, I wanna find this. There's a cut of this move someone re edits this movie and to get rid of the Manson family, which just means it's an hour and a half of Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio chilling in their house. And I really <laughs> wanna see it. <laughs> that sounds that sounds like the the most ultimate background movie I've ever heard of. You know? But it's interesting how the Manson family, all of their scenes, is the only thing that driving the plot. Movie a plot, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is. I mean, again, I think this was really like Tarantino wanted to recreate his childhood, you know, and because yeah. and in the book they mention Tarantino. Like, um, there's a bit where I think, and I, I haven't gotten this bit, but apparently there's a bit where uh, Rick Dalton goes to a bar and then he meets Tarantino. Tarantino's dad, who's in real life, Tarantino's dad was like a, like a singer at a bar, and okay. then Tarantino's dad says, "Hey, can you sign this autograph for my son, Quentin?" Um, so like, yeah, like this was this was Tarantino's childhood. I'm like, and I'm watching this movie. And I'm so envious. Like, this seems like an awesome time to be alive. You know, <laughs> like I'm going to the U.S. in a bit. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, you know. Um, I also think it's, as I mentioned, like, Cliff Booth being a cowboy, it's gotta mean something that Cliff Booth is, like, Tarantino ju- had, like, his la- last two movies, other than this one, um, he, because before this, he'd done two westerns. He did Django Unchained, and he did, uh, The Hateful Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I actually think, um, The Hateful Eight... And this movie would be a really good, like a really interesting double feature. The reason is, is because, so, this, I think this movie, I would say this, this movie is, like, in general, like, a happy movie, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I know, like, there's this horrible ending, but, like, <laughs> it's a happy movie in that it's, like, the, the everything kind of goes right for the the characters. Like, hmm. Cliff, like, Cliff, Cliff, he goes to a place full of murderers. He doesn't know they're full of murderers, but full of murderers. And he, like, and then a guy pops his tires, so he punches him in the face and makes him fix his car. Like, everything works out for these characters. Like, like, in that lens. And then if you watch The Hateful Eight, which I think, I think, and I, I'm biased, but it might be my favorite Tarantino movie, just because of, like, um, the aesthetic. Hmm. Is It's a cruel, cruel movie. Really? Like, it's... It's not, it's like the opposite of this, where like, and I love it, but it's, it's a hard mood to get through, like, er, like, there's blood everywhere, most of the characters, if not all of them, die. Um, Thank you, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, no. Uh, I said, if not most, I said most, which means, also, if you're watching a Tarantino movie, someone's gonna die. Yeah. Just how just how he roll, um, yeah. But like, it's it's a very cruel movie, and there are part like, and there are parts of the movie where like there are small details that just make it crueler. Um, like this isn't a, a spoiler, I don't think. Um, there's a bit where because it's based like just uh, like a few like ten years after the Civil War, hmm. where a group of outlaws kill. Um, a family of like a, like a a family who run this like a a black family who run this like inn, and it just like it Tarantino didn't need to make them black, but it hurts a little bit more that they are because yeah. like it's just like they they get presumably they were slaves and then they get out of slavery and then they get killed by like this group of horrible people, you know. But that is, I guess, what happens and what happens. Yeah. So I think this, it'd be really, really kind of juxtaposed this movie to The Hateful Eight, because they're just, they're like, stylistically, they're very similar, because they're both directed by Tarantino, they're both, like, they've both filmed the same, I think they were probably filmed with the same cameras. Um, I think they're they're both filmed in 70 millimeter film. Hmm. But, which is a very old-fashioned kind of thing, I I think, it's one of those things, like, uh, a lot of, like uh, uh, Christopher Nolan uses it. It's like this kind of. I think it lo- a lot of people who like love films usually think it looks better. Um, yeah. Yeah. So stylistically and visually, these are very similar movies. And also, like the juxtaposition of that movie 
ex- accentuates how cold it is. I just thought it was accentuates how cold it is. Like, it's based in, like, an Alaskan winter, and it is cold. And then this movie's constantly talking about how hot it is, you know? Like here. In, in, in... Like, nondescript part of London. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so, it's, so I think it, actually, I might that would be an interesting thing to do. Like maybe one day, like we got you got a bunch of friends over, like watch these two movies back to back. I don't know which one you want to watch first because I mean I'd probably mm, actually because mm, I'm trying to think. Would you want to end that on a happy note or a sad note? Because one's gonna I mean they both end on happy notes, but one's a more of a melancholy happy note. You know? Yeah. I'm really sorry if I'm ruining this movie for some people. No, don't worry. You're ruining it for me, but don't worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. I haven't seen it. I think that's an. I don't think I've ruined it too much. I I honestly really don't mind. I'll watch it with you one day. Uh, I'll watch, real quick, very random out of the way. Um, it is. It's really the one shot that looked weird in this movie, and mm-hmm. it's the one shot that uses CGI. It's a was- shot of the uh when when he says. When Rick Dolan's come back to Italy, there's a shot of the plane, and it just it looks so jarring to me because everything else has been um, practical. Like every he built the sets, and like there's like no CGI in this entire movie except that one scene, and I'm just like except that one shot where 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 everything's CGI because they're like showing a plane in the middle of the air. I'm like, couldn't you just use some old footage for that? Like if I could change anything, I'd just change change that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really notice that scene. Yeah, again, most people don't notice it. I've just, I've kind of gotten used to noticing when something is practical and when something's you done CGI. Eye. That's what happens to you when you watch too many movies. <laughs> you, you, now I can't, like, every time I see a dummy in a movie, like, I was watching Jason Bourne, Jason Bourne Identity Us last night, and the bit where he jumps off the stairs and shoots a guy... And they, like, when he hits the ground, it was such an obvious dummy to me, and me alone. And I'm watching, I'm like, you guys saw that, right? And they're like, what? I'm like, it's a very obvious dummy. Like, they were stiff <laughs> when they hit the ground. <laughs> um, yeah, so. My own obsession is faulting me now. <laughs> it's like having perfect pitch. <laughs> like having perfect pitch. <gasps> yeah. But this one takes hours. Because every movie's two hours now, which... This movie's run by this... This movie's really long. But again, I think it's okay, because it's not trying to be, like, a plot movie. Like, you can yeah. pause this movie in the middle of it. Yeah. It's not Irishman length, because... I'm watching Jesus. Irishman, actually. When? I've been... I've st- I watched, started watching it last night. Oh, boy. That's going to take you some time. How long is it? <laughs> Three hours and 40 minutes. Ooh, it's this movie plus another hour. What? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then I saw the book of it, and the book's like a very like normally length looking book. So I'm like, <laughs> did you keep everything in the book? And then and then you look at you look at the print size of the words, and you realize they're half a millimeter big. <laughs> I might read that book. Yeah. So um. That's I, th- I think that's kind of all we got to say. Uh, that yeah. that this was Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm Luke. I'm Max. I will be. I will be back, as the Terminator once said. Yeah, I actually don't. Yeah, I don't know if you need to. Re- I don't need to record anything soon, but uh, yeah. Well, we'll see you next time <laughs> on. H-J- Caballero, chair, heck, tall, hit bound 947 at Cage Day with Humble Harm and we'll take it down home. Hi, this is Luke. If you like that video, please like and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.